12,000 years ago, 10,000 Tunguska level explosions rained down upon the earth. But this was only one catastrophe in a huge cycle of disasters associated with the end of the Ice Age, lasting many thousands of years. As soon as the earth has stability, we suddenly can have history and huge numbers of humans. The fact this has not always been the case shows that Earth is not a stable place in the long term. Ancient peoples foresaw and even predicted these catastrophes in advance, locking knowledge into a huge and imperishable structure which would stand forever if it was not tampered with. They did this for us, as a measure to accelerate the rise of future civilizations following world disasters. I truly believe that in addition to a stone age used for mountain and trinity worship, pyramids and pyramid complexes contain relics of a machine-like high technology actually built into their structure. This is an incredibly ancient use for pyramids before they were pyramids. I refer to Pushpaka Vimanas. These are ancient craft, which directly translate into English as flying vehicle craft described in Indian texts as possessing weapons of tremendous defensive as well as offensive power. One was said to have hit under an ocean, and part of an ocean was evaporated in order to find and destroy it. Some were as big as cities, and even pyramid shaped. They would have landed on plateaus. Are the Giza pyramids built as a homage to these ancient vessels? How else are we to explain the literal space-age precision of the Great Pyramid? Such precision is found in no other place except for mass-produced machines and the space industry. After decades, literally, of puzzling out the machine-like yet non-machine-like qualities of the Great Pyramid, this is the explanation I've finally settled on and what I truly believe. It is most satisfying. Tens of thousands of years after the Vimana Age, as legend has it, Khufu had a dream of the stars spinning and falling to earth. This was interpreted by the experts as a sign of disaster to come in Egypt's future and the end of the civilization represented by the holders of the knowledge of the days before the Great Pyramid. It was decided to build the Great Pyramid, which would preserve all the science, astronomy and knowledge of the world. Afterwards, Khufu actually boasted that although it is easier to destroy than to build, let anyone try to destroy in 600 years what he had built in 60. It was the genius mind of Johannes Kepler who said the moon was built to the same dimension as the sun as viewed from earth deliberately so that the contemplative creature who roamed the earth might learn astronomy. It was the desire of the pre-Egyptians that the future caveman of the stone age should look up and view the Great Pyramid and realize that more is possible. In addition to their use as a place for Trinity worship and mountain worship, I believe that in many ways, pyramids and temples in India do replicate the flying cities of old. In many ways, the plan to assist the future rise of man was completely successful, just as the unbelievable team of pyramid designers with their 280 IQ measures and enormous heads foresaw. Isaac Newton, our greatest scientist in history and my personal favorite, knew this precisely. He is the founder of calculus, modern physics and optics. He spent the rest of his life trying to found modern chemistry as well, but one person cannot do everything. By some intuitive force, he was aware of the huge significance of the pyramid. He was obsessed with the pyramid because he knew it contained precise ancient measures which he could use to verify the English foot, the yard and other measures which he knew were left over from the time of the ancient world travelers. By intuition alone, the intuition that he used to uncover the sciences of physics and verify them, he knew that the English units were one and the same as those used in the pyramids and he may have been right. He also needed to measure the Great Pyramid to verify his theory of gravitation. To fully measure gravity, he needed to know the weight of the Earth which pulled it and therefore also the circumference of the Earth. The Egyptian cubit would give him the stadium, which was based upon degrees of longitude. He realized the only storehouse of knowledge which contained the circumference was the Great Pyramid. It follows that Isaac Newton believed in a lost super civilization, or he believed that God himself enshrined the units there as an assistance to mankind. 
He thought that the pyramid represented the Earth, with the base circumference of the pyramid enshrining the Egyptian cubit, a unit which was based off of the circumference of the actual Earth. This theory was actually proven by a mathematician in the 20th century called Livio Staccini, but archaeologists ignored it because one, he wasn't an Egyptologist, and two, they couldn't understand it. The same fate befell Norman Lockyer, astronaut, astronomer royale, who wrote the incredible dawn of astronomy and for the same reasons he was ignored. Newton was familiar with history texts such as Geoffrey of Monmouth and the Bible, both of which described great builders in ancient times. He would have marveled at the idea of an enormous tower to heaven, realizing it was beyond the technology of his own time. He would have marveled also at tales of giants putting two and two together. I am guessing that he realized they had giant brains and with the world having one language, realized they were a worldwide empire possessing advanced understanding as well as a knowledge of the circumference of the world. He really wasn't joking when he said he was standing on the shoulders of giants. Rees was a professor of geometry at Gresham College, London. He was later a professor of astronomy and an antiquary, as they called archaeologists in those days. In the 1630s, Greaves travelled to Egypt exploring and drawing ancient sites. Unfortunately, Greaves was himself too blown away by the scope of the problem and he lacked accurate measuring but was unable to clear away the debris around the base of the Great Pyramid to obtain an accurate result. Newton was a man truly ahead of his time. Had he lived today, he would still be thinking centuries in advance of these times in which we live. Greaves would go on to write a book with the title and subtitle as The Origin and Antiquity of Our English Weights and Measures Discovered by their near agreement with such standards that are now found in one of the Egyptian pyramids. If you consult Wikipedia, you can see that this hasn't stopped some archaeologists in the past actually rubbishing the mathematicians and accusing them of combining with myth mystics in their important work on the pyramids which they associate with the pyramidologists of the early 20th century. They believe that all these are pyramidologists and they are all trying to prophesize. Archaeologist is similar archaeology is similar to art history. Archaeologists can't do math or astronomy, period, these being different fields. Hence their intense rubbishing of the Orion con correlation theory, for example, by which the three pyramids point to Orion's belt. I would have thought it natural that pyramids representing fertility, as archaeologists say, would correlate to Orion, who was Osiris, the king of fertility gods, and also conveniently to his midsection. To be honest, archaeology isn't really a science at all. Though some scientific methods are employed, the problem is that any results do need to actually correlate with pre-existing paradigms, or the work will never see the light of day. This is called calibration. I call this the filter of the past. Hey guys, check out this video on YouTube. It's going to be all about... So, anyway guys, Facebook is moving in the direction of short videos, so what I'm going to do as a reward for going to my Facebook, I'm just going to put up a short trailer for every YouTube video I make, and it's not going to contain anything that you wouldn't see in the YouTube video, but I don't know, there might be an extra insight or something like that. Okay, cheers.